Today, I tell you how to get ready for your first bike park trip. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. My name is John. If you're new here, consider subscribing, hitting that bell to get instant notifications when I upload new content. Today I get you ready for your first bike park trip. So here we are, we're in my, uh, my basement. It's uh, quite dungeonous. Uh, so sorry for the, uh, if the lighting is bad, there's not really outlets down here and stuff, but that's besides the point. Today's video is all about setting you and your bike up to get ready for your first bike park trip. Or maybe you've already been there, you need a refresher, or another perspective on how people actually do things different than you. So the most important thing about going to a bike park is your safety. Bike parks are pretty rough and uh, it's good to have good safety gear. Don't cheap out on this stuff. Get yourself a good helmet. Uh, right here, this is a Bell actual downhill mountain biking helmet. Some of my sponsor, my AOT goggles here. Uh, I, have, I opted for the, uh, the purple tinted lens, which is great during the day. It's really, really dark at night, but I don't do a lot of downhill night riding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this, this helmet, I've crashed a lot with this helmet on and haven't cracked it. It's still it's still in good shape. Get yourself a good helmet. I don't care about looking doofy. I don't care what people think about me. So I run knee and elbow pads. I, I really don't care. You know, I don't care what I look like. I don't want to blow my knees or my elbows apart. I'm a mechanic in real life, not YouTube. So I need my limbs. So I run the Fox D30. This is the, uh, the leg guard. So it's got your knee your shin and then almost literally on these ones down to my shoe pretty much and then these are the d30 uh elbow pads they're nice and soft but the harder you hit them they firm up which is very weird i, I don't know the science behind it but these have saved me multiple times because like i said i crash a lot then you're gonna want to get yourself some gloves you know this this these are something you could probably cheap out on to be honest i just wear whatever you know, I, I think I got these on Amazon. They're just gloves, whatever. You know, I like to, my hands, I like them to be free. So I get a lot of hand fatigue. I don't need anything else helping with that. So also on the topic of safety, don't go full bore once you get off the lift. Use your senses. So there's a thing they say at the bike park, pre-ride, re-ride, free ride. Meaning take a ride down the trail you're gonna ride on. Do it again. And then once you're comfortable, go ahead and you know, give the beans, really, really get into it there. Cause you, if, the, if you're new here, you do not know the trails and you're going to hurt yourself. You're like there's a lot of jumps that will just jump right into berms. And if you don't know that's coming up, you can just overshoot and just right into that berm. I've seen it happen. You'll see it. And I'll see it again. Take your time, you know, don't hurt yourself and just have fun. Next, make sure your bike is up to the task. No cross country bikes for this. You know, a lot of these bike parks will um, not so much check your bike, but if they deem it not rideable for the terrain, they'll let you know, and they won't let you ride up the, the lift and take take a ride down the mountain. Most bike parks offer a rental service. If you don't feel like your bike is, you know, safe, rent a downhill bike. You'll you'll be much more happier. You'll feel much more safe. It's just a good idea. You're gonna be you're flying down a mountain. You know, your brakes need to be correct. Like I I had. What did I have? Two piston, just SRAM uh, level T brakes on this, and they weren't stopping good. You know, I upgraded to a uh, set of Tektro Orion four piston front and rear with 200 mil rotor in the front and 180 in the rear, and this thing will stop now, but you know, it was sketchy going down some trails. It just wouldn't stop, it had brake fade, I'd overheat the pads. It's not a fun time when you can't stop. So you're gonna wanna set your bike up differently than you would for like your local trail rides. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So now that I got my bike on the stand, uh, things I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over, you know, tire pressures, set my air suspension, make sure that's good. You know, check your brakes, check your brake pads, stuff like that. Do a bolt check. That's like one of the most important things, especially anywhere there's a pivot point. So I haven't gone to the downhill park in uh, in quite a while, so I'm gonna have to do a complete reset up on this bike. So I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step process of what I do, so maybe I can give you some ideas on what you should do. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my tire pressures. Um, if you're riding flow trails, they're usually pretty smooth. So uh, like I like to start with like 30 PSI in the front and the rear. If you're riding, uh, um, you know, techie trails, I'd start with 25 in the front and rear and then adjust from there. You'll get a pretty good idea of how your bike is performing 
based on your tire pressures and what you need to do. So I know I'm going to be riding a lot of flow trails. Um, so I'm going to set my tire pressures right now to 30 and I know that I'm going to be uh, putting them down to about 28 or so because I just know the terrain. I've been here a couple times. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now that my rear tire is at 30 PSI, I'm going to do the same thing to the front. So another really good thing to do is, you don't have to do this, but I totally recommend it. Get yourself a set of downhill specific tires. I run a Maxxis Asagai downhill casing in the front and I have a WTB Judge downhill casing in the rear. They're just a tougher tire. They have different knobs to, you know, really dig into the, the dirt there. Some of them are actually bike park specific. Just another thing to uh, really help you out. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do after I set my tire pressures is I like to you know, oil my chain. You should oil your chain before every single ride, whether you're using wet or dry lube. What you want is up to you, but I just use uh, multi-purpose oil. It's also a good thing to run through the gears, get some of that lube on your cassette. All right, so now I'm going to do a bolt check. It's just a quick one, you know, just check any bolt on your bike that you have easy access to. They'll probably all be tight, but it's good to uh, check it and uh, not find out the hard way that they're loose. Now, obviously you don't want to go overboard on any of this stuff. You don't want to be stripping out things. Make sure that stuff's tight. Uh, that's the last thing you're going to want. <laughs> Something else that I really like to do is get yourself a bottle of uh, fork stanchion lube. You put it on your stanchions and you compress you know, your shock and your fork and it'll bring out any dirt that's trapped in the seals and it lubes it up and makes it slide smoother. So to do this, I'm gonna pull my little ring all the way up and just drip some on the fork. Be careful with it though, make sure you don't get any on your, uh, your brake disc. So I got that on there, I'm just gonna Compress it. Now it's all lubed. After you lube your stanchions up, it's a good idea to check your suspension settings. Setting your sag specifically is what I mean. Your sag is very important. It uh, That dictates what your suspension is gonna feel like to you and how it's gonna perform. A good rule of thumb is 30% sag in the front and 25% sag in the rear. Obviously that's subjective. I usually run 25% and 25% all around. It's just, I just like how that feels, but that might be too stiff for some people. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my sag. You'll do this by adjusting your air pressure until you get to the uh, desired sag level. If you have a, um, a higher end RockShox suspension, they're gonna have uh, sag markings on the stanchions. I'm gonna set my front sag first. So what you're gonna wanna do is cycle your suspension a couple of times to get it warmed up. Then you're gonna sit on the bike, lean against something, stand up in your attack position. That is your riding position standing up. Push your ring down if you have one. If you don't, you can use a zip tie. Very carefully dismount the bike. Let's see what I got here. I'm currently at 25. That's exactly where I wanna be. So now I'm gonna do the same thing to the rear. The rear is much easier. I feel like the rear probably already has too much in it. The rear, you can just sit, put your entire weight on the bike, push your ring up, get up. I'm at 25. Perfect. So I just added a random amount of air from kind of what I remembered setting my suspension to and it was actually perfect. So <laughs> that's great. If you're not this lucky, then you just hook your pump up if you're uh, getting like too much sag. So if you were going for a 25% sag, you were getting 30%. All you have to do is add air, five to 10 PSI increments. Keep rechecking until you get to the desired sag level. If you have not enough sag, let air out. Use your pump to let air out. Pushing the Schrader valve on your suspension is probably gonna let too much air out too quickly. So just use the little bleed valve on the pump itself to get uh, more accurate results. So for your rebound, you're gonna want to set it as fast as possible without being too fast that you're not feeling comfortable riding down the trail. If you feel like the bike is bucking you when you're hitting jumps or rocks, try and uh, slow down the rebound and the rear shock. And you're gonna have to experiment with this because what feels good to me might not feel good to you. I kind of set it in the middle when I'm actually doing this. I'll set it in the center. I'll find the amount of clicks, center that out, take a ride down the mountain, and then go from there. And you'll eventually find what feels perfect for you where your bike is always planted. The last 
last and final step to getting you and your bike ready for the bike park is to lower your saddle as far down as it can possibly go. You know, you're at a downhill mountain biking park and the last thing you want is to get caught up on your saddle and hit whatever's in front of you because let me tell you, there's a lot of obstacles on trails and you don't want to hit any of them. So get that seat down out of the way so you don't have to worry about it. Also, if you have a little toolkit, you could bring that. You know, I, I have a custom toolkit that I made out of a little bit of a bunch of Harbor Freight stuff and it works pretty good. Uh, bring that with you, you know, bring a pump, bring a shock pump, some snacks, definitely drinks, food, bike park food and water and all that stuff's very expensive. So it's good to like pack lunches. Like I like personally to bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I actually just bring a loaf of bread and peanut butter and jelly and I make them there. I eat probably about four or five of them throughout the day, but it's also smart to like bring some extra tires. These two tires were on my bike in the beginning of the season and uh, they lasted one bike park trip. They're literally brand new still and they just, I blew them out. Just what happens, like right here, there's actually a uh, plug in it, which was I thought where it was leaking from, which it was, but then I found that there's a uh, a hole in the sidewall. So that's that's something that's gonna happen quite often. You're gonna blow out tires, which is why I recommend getting downhill casings. Also, if you are tubeless, strap a tube to your bike. Uh, I had to push my bike down a mountain two times in the same day. One was from the derailleur braking, but first time I was literally all the way at the top of the mountain and uh, I blew my rear tire out bad and I had to push the bike down because I wasn't riding it and ruining my rail. Bring a bring a tube or bring a backpack with a tube in it, something like that with you on the trail. You'll, uh, you'll thank me later. So yeah, these are some tips that I can give you. Not all of them, you'll figure things out on your own. I just figured I'd try to help you out a little bit for your first time. If you like what you saw in today's video, consider subscribing and hitting that bell to get instant notifications when I upload upload new content. I usually upload every Friday, but I've been slacking lately, sorry. But other than that, I'll click the links are down below in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.